<laughs> Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is an award-winning author who's been profiled in Black Enterprise, Ebony, The New York Times, and so, so many other publications. For her efforts to bring diversity and inclusion to the forefront. <laughs> Absolutely, and today she's sharing lessons from her climb to senior level of the corporate ladder, ladder and uh, advice on how women can navigate their challenges in the workplace, which we really desperately oh. need. Please welcome Michelle Gaston Williams. Thank yes, you so much uh, for joining us for today. Happy yes, Friday. Uh, I'm telling you, and I'm loving the topic because we talk about this a lot. We sure uh, do. I'm, I'm telling you, and, and it seems like there's always some inequality there when we're talking about women in the workplace and one of your favorite quotes was, uh, let's, let's read that right here. You said, um, too much is given, much is required. Yes. What exactly does that mean, Michelle? If we are blessed mm -hmm. to have talent, knowledge, wealth, and the like, mm -hmm. it is our indelible responsibility to pay it forward to make sure that we are blessing others. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Heard it in my household growing up. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I've heard it all my life, you yes. know. But speaking of things that you've heard all your life, you use words like diversity, inclusion, things you call buzzwords. Yes. Uh, and you've been a champion of these words for over 20 years. Yes. But, but how can, there, there's always room for more improvement and how can we move towards those improvements? I think holding companies accountable, holding mm -hmm. organizations accountable, mm -hmm. Um, having an individual like myself who does this for a living full time, mm -hmm. this is not a side gig, this is what we do. Um, and I also think just by having targets and goals and measurements and other things, that is going to help us to move the needle going forward mm -hmm. from a corporate perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting because we've seen women be held back, you know, if, if, if we become pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen us not get promotions, we've seen us uh, be, be passed over when we have all of the qualifications. It, I'm talking about exceptionally. Yes. Uh, we exceed the qualifications, but we are, the, the job is, is passed over, we're looked over for the position. What can we do to uh, ensure that we won't have those financial penalizations? Mm, financial penalizations. I think that the more in which we can advocate and champion for ourselves mm -hmm. and have sponsors and mentors who can also do that for us, that will put us in the forefront mm -hmm. of being considered for those stretch assignments and opportunities as they become available. Mm -hmm. So I think we, it's a matter Strong of... Strong advocates. A, exactly, uh -huh. but we have to advocate for ourselves yeah. as well. And I think we as women, sometimes we don't do that. Yeah. Why do you think that we're fearful? We're fearful to ask for, you know, just the national average of what is due for a, a position. Um, we, we think that, okay, whatever is offered to us, if, it, if it's good money, we like to coin things as being good money, but it's really below the, the average the, the, the standard nationally. So say for instance, if a job um, nationally will pay maybe 120,000, but as women we go into uh, the, uh, uh, the, the negotiate, go to the negotiating table and they say, okay, well we're gonna offer you 90. Sometimes women will say, you know, 90, that's, that's, that's good money. You know, right. so why, you know, right. I, I, don't, I, I need more, I want more, right. but I'm afraid to ask for more. We need to have the courage to have the conversation to ask for what we want. And I see some of our other counterparts doing that, the majority population, mm -hmm. if I should be so polite to say mm -hmm. that. Um, and what's the worst that can happen is that they say no. So if you understand your own net worth, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of information out there where you can find out what your net worth is, um, from glassdoor.com to other, I, I can cite all of the uh, websites mm -hmm. for you. Um, but I just think we just need to go into these conversations a lot more informed about mm -hmm. who we are, our qualifications, and not being afraid to say, this is who I am, this is the, uh, what I bring to the table, mm -hmm. and this is what I believe I deserve. Well, well, with that, you know, it's really difficult, as you know, being a woman in any industry, because when you are a strong woman, quote yeah. unquote, mm -hmm. yes. uh, you're a threat, or you become the B word. Mm -hmm. you know, but or angry it, and black, yeah, you know, I mean, and it, woman. <laughs> if it's a man, you know, that's par for the course. Right. So, so how do we stand our ground as far as negotiations are concerned and still remain likable? Interesting. So that is um, a topic that we as women wrestle with, the mm -hmm. likability factor versus the competency mm -hmm. factor. And when I think about over the years in terms of my own career, I worried about that. Yes. You know, am I... Uh, too aggressive, too assertive. You know, what do people think about how I'm showing up in the workplace? Mm -hmm. But over time, you don't really care what people think. Yeah. Uh, you want to focus on the job, doing a great job, and what your output is at the end of the day, because ultimately, that's what you're being measured on. Right? Well, mm -hmm. not to interject, but, but, okay, but even knowing your worth, yeah, 
and we just talked about that a second ago, even yes. knowing your worth and standing your ground, yes. should you be willing to walk away? Ooh, that's good. That is a that's good one. That's real good right there. Now, Michelle, we got you. Yeah, on I know. That. <laughs> <laughs> you see my face, right? You see my face. <laughs> uh, sometimes you do have to make that hard decision mm -hmm. and, and walk away. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is not for everyone, and mm -hmm. what's for you is for you, and mm -hmm. only you can determine what that is. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah, very political, true. very diplomatic, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was inside there. It was. Yeah. So let's talk about self care because we, we do a lot of that. We talk about that all the time here yeah. self care, uh, making sure that we are aligned with ourselves and making sure that we're not uh, neglecting ourselves. Often women do, you know, because we're taking care of everything else. How do we make it a priority, Michelle, to take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. but still remaining focused and climbing the ladder in our career arena? Yeah, sometimes we're forced to make yeah. the choice, right? Either through chronic illnesses or what have you. But I think that most organizations now are seeing wellness as a part of the, um, the opportunity that they're presenting to individuals because we are becoming a lot more conscious mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. mental health, uh, chronic illnesses on the rise and such and so forth. So I think we're asking the questions right. as right. we're walking into these places of employment. So um, I think that um, we just need to do a better job of advocating for ourselves and our mm -hmm. health and what's most important for us. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. I think the first of which is, and I have my notes here, yeah, yeah, is sure. uh, getting more sleep. So when I think about self-care, a lot of us just don't. Seven to eight hours is the typical average in terms of uh, rejuvenating, reinvigorating right, yourself. Right. Um, we, we, we don't get in that type of We story. don't. We don't, but you know, we need to have you back for like a longer segment. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's over we, that there's quick. so many more I answers we need, but we thank you for coming here and offering a GPS for navigating workplace challenges. <laughs> and to all of you out there, if you haven't already picked up her book, pick up her book, Climb, so you too can take every step on your career journey with conviction and courage.